Ωρε μαλάκα στη φυκή Bulldozers are trying to push this river back into its bed. Torrential rain swelled it so much that it burst its banks and sliced through a network of roads. This flood came before dawn, catching people in bed. Some drowned in their apartments. Others were found in their front yards. Two bodies washed out to sea. The body of one woman was found in the street. Even this dog couldn't outrun the water. The mayor has opened up the town hall for people who've nowhere to sleep because their houses are ruined. It is a catastrophe of biblical proportions. The entire town was flooded before daylight. The water came with force, carrying materials with it and blocking drains. Cars were swept away and people were trapped in their houses. Some climbed onto their roofs. Nothing like this has happened before. The damage is still being assessed, but dozens of homes and businesses have been destroyed. Until Wednesday, this was a doctor's waiting room. There's nothing left of this flower shop. Stock and equipment are destroyed. The owner has lived next door for over 50 years and was lucky to escape alive. I always leave this window open a crack and I heard the moan of the torrent and came out and I shouted to my grandchildren to get out of bed. By the time we were out of the house, the water was already flooding in. It took seconds. The manholes in the street broke open and the water was jumping two meters up into the air. The water came into Griada's house a meter high, destroying everything she owns. Even her clothes are unusable. She saved just her dressing gown. This is partly a man-made disaster. People who grew up here remember the dry riverbed that used to run through this intersection. 36 years ago, it was built over, but the piping used wasn't wide enough to carry the torrential rain down to the sea, and the area flooded. Even when it was rebuilt 18 years ago, the same thing happened. But other factors may also play a role. The mountains above Megara were recently devastated by fire. The loss of vegetation means heavy rain more easily eroded the soil. The cleanup here will take days or weeks, but repairing the damage to people's lives will take months or years. John Saropoulos, Al Jazeera, Megara.
ισχυρή καταιγίδα αυτή την ώρα στη Μάνδρα. Δυστυχώ τα πράγματα δεν είναι καλά και σήμερα. Παρατηρείτε πόσο έντονα είναι τα φαινόμενα. Πέφτει πάρα πολύ νερό. Όπω χαμό. Δείξτε ιδιαίτερη προσοχή. Παρακαλώ, δείξτε ιδιαίτερη προσοχή. Θέλω να μιλήσει, ρε. Παιδιά, καλημέρα. Κατερίνη, αυτό είναι ο Πέλεκας. Έχει ανέβει αρκετά η στάθμη από ό,τι βλέπετε. Ας ευχηθούμε να μην γίνει το χειρότερο. Τον κάτω βγάλε. Τον κάτω πάει βούλ. Ω, εδώ έρχεται. Εδώ πέρα τα μάτια.
viral viral ya sempat naik tapi dia sasmet hancur di temar muk balik ke kepala lagi wah pak kata drumna amurasut radio terus melimpas lagi nepi ya mau kau gerem Intensitas hujan yang masih tinggi di wilayah Bandung menyebabkan tiga kecamatan di Kabupaten Bandung kembali terendam luapan sungai Citarum. Ketinggian air bahkan mencapai 2 meter. Banjir luapan sungai Citarum kembali tinggi dan merendam ribuan rumah yang berada di Dayuh Kolot, Bale Endah, dan Bojong Soang. Bahkan ketinggian air di pemukiman warga mulai dari 40 cm hingga 2 meter. Aktivitas warga pun kembali terganggu, mereka harus menggunakan perahu untuk bisa keluar masuk perkampungan yang terendam. Air banjir yang sempat surut Kamis pagi kemarin kembali naik setelah hujan turun pada petang hingga Kamis malam.
Banjir akibat luapan bendungan pandan duri ini menerjang pemukiman warga sejak minggu dini hari. Selain merusak ratusan rumah warga, banjir bandang di Lombok Timur juga mengakibatkan sejumlah infrastruktur mengalami kerusakan. Dari empat desa yang terdampak banjir, kondisi terparah terdapat di desa Sepit dan desa Sinyur. Di kedua desa tersebut air menggenangi rumah warga setinggi hampir satu setengah meter. Akibat bencana ini ratusan warga terpaksa mengungsi ke rumah keluarga dan kerabat terdekat. Tim penanggulangan bencana langsung turun melakukan evakuasi dan membersihkan rumah warga yang tertimbun tanah dan puing-puing bangunan. Banjir masih menggenangi kompleks Kemendikbud di Kelurahan Ciketing, Udik, Kecamatan Bantar Gebang, Kota Bekasi, Jawa Barat. Banjir menggenangi ratusan rumah di kompleks perumahan ini lebih dari satu minggu. Selain akibat curah hujan yang tinggi, banjir juga disebabkan masih berprosesnya perbaikan saluran air yang sebelumnya sempat longsor. Ketinggian air bervariasi mulai dari 60 cm hingga 1 meter. alcantarillado sus impuestos ¿cuáles obras? ¿cuáles obras? mire eso
Wow. I think I'll stay in the office.
A violent storm has swept through Kalgoorlie this afternoon, uprooting trees and bringing down power lines. Wind gusts of up to 107 kilometres an hour tore through the region and tonight thousands of residents are still without power. It was sudden and ferocious. Holy the storm tearing through Kalgoorlie around 2 o'clock this afternoon, causing chaos in the streets of the Goldfields town. A falling power line setting fire to this former art studio on Maritana Street in Piccadilly, the one occupant managing to escape unhurt. As the wild weather intensified, dozens of trees came tumbling down. A 107 kilometre an hour wind gust recorded at the airport. Branches strewn across roads, fences and even cars. After the rain came hail. 12 millimetres falling in just 15 minutes. Some swamped by flash flooding, with power knocked out to 4,000 homes and around a dozen commercial properties impacted. So far, no injuries have been reported. In my street, I saw a trampoline just being flung like it was a piece of paper through the streets. The storm continued its destructive path south this afternoon, rolling through Cambalda and the Fraser Range. And Elizabeth Creasy joins us live now. Liz, how common are these sorts of weather events? Well, Michael, the Bureau of Meteorology issued a severe weather warning early this morning because it does see these types of events quite often, but they usually pass through areas that aren't quite so populated. There is still a severe weather warning in place tonight for the Goldfields Midlands and the Great Southern, so anyone in those areas is urged to go to the emergency WA website to stay across any developments. Michael. Liz Creasy, thank you.
And we begin tonight with the dangerous high winds affecting more than 100 million people. Take a look at this scaffolding slamming down on a busy New York City sidewalk, trapping people below. And this scene outside of a high rise as a major storm system sweeps through the east. That same system that slammed through the Midwest, leaving tractor trailers overturned in Indiana. ABC's Eva Pilgrim starts us off tonight. Tonight, dangerous winds slamming more than 100 million Americans this weekend. Gusts pushing the scaffolding into a New York City high rise. Then, chaos when a second scaffold came crashing down. No warning to those below. I just, I just started crying instantly and I froze. Passerby scrambling to pull people out. Seconds later, firefighters rushed in. People were coming in trying to help. You could tell they were like trying to talk to somebody that was underneath it. At least five hurt. Police blame strong winds. You can see that scaffolding fell just over the stairs to the subway. They, thankfully, no trains had just pulled in and people weren't coming up. The winds threatening homes along the Long Island Sound and whipping up waves on Lake Ontario, forcing drivers to deal with blinding lake effect snow tonight. That as crews work to restore power to thousands in the Northeast. <sighs> that same system punishing the Tennessee Valley overnight. Winds topping 100 miles per hour, triggering warning sirens in Nashville. 17 year old Ellie Williams and her sister locked out of their house the moment a tornado hit. The wind was just swirling, and we were just praying that we were, we'd be saved. Storms ripping through Indiana, snapping trees, ripping apart signs, and flipping this 18 wheeler. And Eva Pilgrim joins us live from the scene of that accident there in New York City. The wind causing plenty of problems today, including at the airports. That's right, Tom. The wind got so strong at points here that it actually shattered windows in some high rises, New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, all seeing flight delays tonight because of that wind. But the wind is starting to die down, so hopefully those flights will be back on schedule for the morning. Tom? We do hope for that. Eva Pilgrim starting us off tonight. Eva, thank you. And we're watching the weather so closely this week because tens of millions of Americans are getting ready to travel for Thanksgiving. ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano joining us now with how all of this will affect the travel days ahead. Rob, good evening. Hi, good evening, Tom. Certainly was a tough one driving with all that wind around today. The center of that low pressure now just north of Maine, but still advisories out for eastern New England with 30, 40, 50 mile an hour gusts there. And then that white you see, that is snow, lake effect snow warning for Syracuse and points north. And the cold air behind this tomorrow is going to be no joke in the morning. 20s for wind chills from Chicago to New York all the way to Boston, teens north of that. And another system coming into the northwest. So tough travel on I-5 the next couple of days. That shouldn't be too much of a problem across the northeast. The southeast will see showers on Thanksgiving Day and still chilly with lake effect snow, but much more quiet as compared to this weekend for the northeast on Thanksgiving. Tom?
Long into the night, after some endless wrangling over the financial element of the text, the 23rd UN Climate Conference comes to a close. I am very pleased that with this decision, the COP launches this dialogue, which will start in January 2018. Under the Fijian presidency, the spirit of these talks has been upbeat, and the Paris Agreement, it seems, is on track. So all in all, I think that we're in a very good place. 2018 is the year to step it up. It's the year to step up climate action, and I think what we have here sets us on a good road ahead. That said, it's a lot of homework to do, it's not easy, but I think we're seeing will and decisiveness on the part of governments, government, cities, states, private sector to move ahead. So, progress, but is it enough for those most immediately threatened by climate change? Not enough is being done. It's, it's certainly not enough for the survival of the Pacific. And there needs to be increased ambition, there needs to be a greater responsibility taken by developed countries, they need to keep fossil fuels in the ground and they need to move towards a safe and just transition to renewable energy. Keeping fossil fuels in the ground was always on the agenda in and outside the conference halls. No German coal phase out from Angela Merkel, but the UK and Canada launched an alliance of 20 nations to wind down coal use. Meanwhile, a delegation sent by the Trump administration to promote coal got a predictable welcome. as a coalition of U.S. states and cities stepped into the void to say, we're still in the Paris Agreement. It doesn't matter how much uh, Donald Trump tweets. He can tweet his fingers off, but he cannot stop us. He cannot stop me from my rule that is reducing carbon pollution. So this conference has delivered what it set out to do and created the mechanism to move the Paris Agreement forward, the so-called Talanoa Dialogue. But before the conference opens in Poland a year from now, there's clearly plenty of work to do. Next stop is the French capital, where in December, President Macron will host a special summit looking specifically at climate finance. The Paris Agreement rolls on. Nick Clark, Al Jazeera, Bonn, Germany. The French Alps, mystical, mesmerizing, and moody. Every day, thousands of hikers, extreme sports people, and alpinists make their way to these mountains to conquer their peaks. But the Alps are changing. The glaciers that used to sweep down to the valleys below are melting. In some places, they are vanishing. Ice scientists are at the forefront of measuring and monitoring these glaciers. It's important and dangerous work. Their office for today is Glacier du Tucanet, 3,500 metres high on the north face of Mont Blanc. We try to set up the LIDAR instrument in order to make uh, topographic measurements of this glacier. These scientists also measure the temperature of the glacier. What they are finding is astounding. The base of the glacier near the bedrock is at minus two degrees. In the future, with the climate warming and with the ice temperature rising, the glacier could become temperate at the melting point. The work these scientists are doing on this mountain and glaciers like Takama is important not just to understand how much more this glacier will heat up, but because it has a bearing on towns like Chamonix uh, down here, which is one of the most recognized extreme sports centers in the world. If this glacier heats up, it could threaten villages like Chamonix. As we filmed, the glacier began to break away, not once, but three times within an hour, further evidence of the danger it presents. Almost 80 million people visit the French Alps every year, generating close to $58 billion in turnover and providing around 12% of jobs. On this graph, we can see directly an increase of melting since 1980 and another increase of melting since 2003. And this melting, this increase of melting is directly related to climate change, to climate warming. At one of the world's oldest scientific ice institutions, the research allows the scientists to mitigate risk. With global warming and the fact that this glacier shrinks and gets warmer, there could be new lakes forming and these lakes could uh, collapse and then produce floods, uh, destroying towns. Uh, the glacier can slip on its bedrock and then again can create avalanches and destroy uh, uh, towns below that. The Institute says these sorts of events are not isolated. 
Research shows climate change is causing glacier melt and water shortages in the Andes. And in Antarctica, melting ice sheets are resulting in rising sea levels. Craig Leeson, Al Jazeera, Mont Blanc. 25 years ago, 1,700 scientists signed a letter which warned mankind that we were facing an existential threat. Now a new alert has been sent out by the Union of Concerned Scientists, and this time they're saying things have never looked so bad. RT America's Alex Mihailovich is in Toronto with the details. Alex, a new warning from the Union of Concerned Scientists has the support of over 15,000 scientists from over uh, uh, 180 countries. What are they saying? Well, experts are saying that things are far, far worse than they were 25 years ago in 1992. They are actually saying that we're pushing for another mass extinction, which would be the sixth in 540 million years. And uh, one big part of that is human consumption. We've gone rampant consuming everything that is in our reach. Now, here's just a little bit of a breakdown of what this actually looks like, and we're calling it the warning to humanity. The first is the amount of fresh water available per head of the population worldwide has reduced to only t by 26% in that short period of time. The number of ocean dead zones, places where little can live, because of pollution and also oxygen starvation, that's increased by 76%, the massive increase. Nearly 300 more million acres of forests have been lost, mostly due to agriculture. That's uh, feeding cows for us to eat. Uh, that's a massive part of it. Uh, global carbon emissions, uh, they've gone up. The average temperature increase, we hear about that all the time. The human population in the past 25 years has risen by 35%. That's a massive one. And if we're looking at animals on the face, face of this planet, they've gone down by 29% in 25 years. We know that many species have become extinct during that period of time. And this is all information that's, uh, that they've uh, gotten from governments, from nonprofit organizations, and from independent research. So there's a lot of info here, and I think that you and I both know that we don't have to think too much if this is true or not. It's very disturbing and sad, honestly, Alex. I mean, is there any hope for us? Well, there is hope if you look at what happened, for example, to the ozone hole. The ozone hole has actually depleted. It's gotten smaller than it was before. So when people put their minds together, they can do something about these things. And we're seeing also with fossil fuel consumption, I mean, you're going to hear here and there different, different uh, perspectives. But the fact is that we are changing into renewable energies. And if we quick the, quicken up this process, there is things that, need, that could be done. So yes, you know, that we, we can move in that direction but the bottom line is yes population growth is huge but what's worse is the consumption and our growing population is consuming more and more so if you look at just uh, 50 years ago or 25 years ago if you take a place like china it was a more of a plant-based diet we're not seeing that people are eating tons and tons of meat what these people are saying is that if we don't change the course right now we're going to be in a lot of pain in the future and it's not going to look good for mankind or for our planet at all well, maybe it's about time we start listening to some of their advice. RT America correspondent Alex Mihailovich in Toronto, thanks a lot. Thank you.